So with new hatchbacks being as big as saloon cars, we want to see if this new Polo GTI, what is supposed to be the more nimble, more drivable version of the Golf, is a homage to the Golf GTIs of old, the old hot hatches. And to do that, we need to compare it to one of these, a Mark 7.5 Golf GTI. So you might be thinking, why are we here today in minus one degree conditions talking about cars? So I currently have in front of me the current release Polo GTI and the current release Golf GTI. I am proud owner of this beautiful machine, the Mark 7.5 Golf GTI. And my good friend Ollie behind the camera is the proud owner of this Polo GTI. And we are basically gonna, for the first time, swap and decide which one if we'd still pick the same car, which one was what we like, what we don't like, and uh, gonna go from there. So the Mark 7.5 Golf GTI, it's actually only a give or take 30 kilograms heavier than the Polo GTI, and it's actually only 30 brake horsepower more powerful, but it is bigger and it does look bigger but I feel like it's gonna feel a bit bigger. Obviously the wheels are a bit bigger and a bit wider, and I think that's gonna contribute to just a more heavy feel overall. So one of the things styling-wise that I love in particular about the Golf GTI are these 80s video game-esque indicator lights. I think one of the first cars to do this was the Audi R8 V10 Plus. And we're seeing more and more cars have this now, even down to, you know, cheap Peugeots. But I think on the Golf in particular, it looks that, just that little bit special. So for the Polo GTI, you've actually got two different trim levels. There's nothing different in performance, it's literally just the trim that it comes with. This is the standard GTI. There's the GTI Plus, which is the next level up. Now the GTI Plus comes with a few little extra mod cons. Mainly, in here you've got an armrest, the digital display, push button start, exterior styling options, you've got the tinted windows, a little bit bigger wheels with a different design, the 18s on the GTI Plus, and those all important Xenon DRL running lights. So here we have the latest release Polo GTI in reef blue, which comes as standard on the GTI or as an optional extra on the basic models. What I like about this car is the wheels are taken directly from the Golf GTI. They add a real pop. It's got a nice wide stance on it. It's got lovely lines down the side. Uh, we've obviously got all the sort of red flashes here on the GTI badge, the grill, the red brake calipers and the little spots of red throughout, which are parts of the car that I really like. That continues inside where we've got the brushed metal, lovely finished uh, dash that I really like. I actually like that more than the Golf interior. It's far more modern. It's definitely aimed at a younger market. This car is quite understated. It's 200 brake horsepower just under from a two litre turbocharged engine. Unlike the Golf, this car only comes in five door and it only comes in it with a DSG gearbox. Now, for hot hatch petrol heads, I suppose like us two and like anyone else that might be watching this video, this would be a really exciting car in a manual. And it's also worth noting that obviously the three door Golf is a better looking car. Um, so it would, be, it would be nice to see a return of a three door, but as it stands, Volkswagen are only releasing and it looks like they're gonna carry on only releasing five door models. Looking around the cabin, it's ever so slightly more dated, I would say, than the Polo GTI. And the only reason I'd say that is because there's like little bits of trim here that I remember having in my Mark V R32 on the dashboard. But that said, this does have the digital display, which is a lot nicer. But yeah, let's give it a drive. Definitely sounds better initially. Even just then, just pulling away, it just sounds. There's a bit more of a grumble to it. There's a bit more going on in the exhaust. It's still subtle, which is what you want from. This is what I like about Golfs and Volkswagen products is 
the premium, they're understated, but the premium is still sporty. Very similar, very similar. I'm definitely not noticing an instant difference in the weight or the power. Actually, yeah, it is a bit more powerful. It picks up a little bit better. I'm just doing about 60 there, and I just put my foot down, and it just picks up a little bit better than that than the Polo DTI. And it seems to sit on the road a bit nicer as well. Like these country roads that I'm on at the moment are quite bumpy. And it's just, it is kind of just holding them a little bit better than that polo would do. Just knock it into spot, let's give it a bit of a squirt up here. Yeah, I mean, it's quick, it's quick. I wouldn't say that it smiles different to the polo, but it's definitely a little, it's a touch quicker. Obviously, it does have a bit more horsepower, so that is to be expected. Just pulling up to a bit of a junction here. I'm just gonna put some little bends down here. I'm just gonna give it a blast. Oh, it sounds good. It sounds good when you put your foot down. It's got that little pop. The polo doesn't have pop like that. This one does. And that sound is nice. It's good. I like it. I like it. It doesn't feel much heavier. To me, anyway, I. I I'm just going through some twisty corners now at 80 mile an hour and it's not worlds away from the polo. Go into this one a little bit hot, try and scrub a bit off. It just holds the road, amazing. This is, for a front wheel drive car, for this to do what it is doing, is very impressive. One of the things that this Golf GTI doesn't have in, in terms of performance options is the adaptive suspension. You can go into the menus and obviously select sports, comfort, uh, I think it's eco they call it, and normal. But then you've got the setting for individual as well to change all the settings. And in my Polo, you've got the option to change the suspension to normal or sport and uh, it definitely does make a difference and in this one you don't have that option it's just when you put it in sport it just firms up slightly but in mind what i like to do is have everything in sport and then set the suspension to normal to deal with these uh, rubbish roads that you've got in yorkshire the engines in these two cars are basically the same engine it's just the one in the polo is mildly detuned and it's obviously got a little bit less horsepower but it's this, essentially the same engine does like to pick up from 50 mile an hour though you know you put your foot down in fit from 50 mile an hour and it just wants to go you're doing 100 before you know it i do like this car and i love golfs and i think the heritage of golf and everything else is one of the things that can't be denied I do like the fanciness of this as well. I like the noise it makes. But from a driving standpoint and a styling point, personally, for me, I would go with the Polo. I would still definitely go with the Polo. I'd probably get the Polo in the GTI Plus spec, though, with the fancy lights and the armrest. But for driving pleasure, the Polo, for me, does it. It's basically this, but slightly lighter, a bit more fun when it gets really twisty. Personally, that's my preference. That is my preference. I really thought that I would change my mind and want this one, and I do like it and I do appreciate it, but yeah, it's the Polo for me. First time in a new Polo, the last Polo I had was when I was 17, and you know, I think I scraped off a few walls and it was a 53 plate. So, you know, they've come a long way. But yeah, right, let's give it a go, see how we get on with it. I mean, I know there's not a huge difference in the, in the size of these cars, but you can really feel how much smaller this feels when you're driving it. It feels a lot more nimble. The steering's lighter in, in, a, in a strange way. Obviously, those smaller, thinner tyres um, that obviously just make this a little bit easier to manoeuvre at lower speeds, but, I mean, we're out on country roads today. So 
you've got this kind of nice engine hum going on, which is quite, quite satisfying, something that the Golf tries to hide. Brakes are great. Throttles, throttles great as well. Wow, this is it's pretty remarkable, actually. Okay, that's a bit quick. Yeah, this is um, dangerous, this thing. This is, like, surprising. I was not expecting kind of that level of, of, of performance. What you do have in the Golf is you, when you go into sport mode, which we are currently in, in this Polo, there's definitely a, a noticeable difference in the, in the steering. It definitely tightens up a little bit. Obviously, my suspension's gonna tighten up a touch as well. Brakes are gonna be a touch more responsive. It's quite nice to be on a old school instruments actually. There's something quite effective about old instruments that with, with these new digital dashes that they're always, I always feel like they're chasing where they should be and you'd never quite know where you're at. Whereas with a, an actual speedometer and an actual revometer, it's actually quite, just does well. It's just there, it does what it needs to do. I mean, it handles the road. I mean, really, really, I mean, it's, it's remarkable. For a car that's, probably £10,000 cheaper, you know, RRP, you get lots of similarities in performance that you, you know, you wouldn't get in other cars of this standard. I mean, this is impressive. But again, what have we got? We've got five doors, we've got a reasonable boot, you know, we've got a great infotainment system, we've got everything you need in a car. I mean, it's a little scratchy when you get in, it is a bit, definitely got a slightly more plasticky feel to it than, than the Golf has, but what you're actually looking at, you know, the dash is nice, you know, everything, every, everything in front of you is nice. I mean, you might not want to be a passenger, but you know, who cares, they're not driving it. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I think compared to the Golf, it's just not, it's just not quite as refined in its driving experience. It doesn't quite put the torque down as well when you're at sort of that two and a half thousand to five thousand RPM. Uh, I think the, the Golf's better at that. But you know, you, this car's 10 grand cheaper. And for, for a car that, you know, essentially is just supposed to be a load of fun and, and, and look smart and probably aimed at a younger clientele, it's great. It's really, really great fun. Overall, I'm very, very impressed. The steering's fabulous. It's very, very well balanced. The weight distribution's very good. They've done a very, very good job indeed. I love it. So, you're still sat in the polo, what do you think? So, I love it. I think it's brilliant, I think it's fast, it's fun, it's modern, it's stylish. They've, I think Volkswagen have clearly poured a bit more heart and soul into this, and I think, you know, you're definitely not getting a polo with a GTI badge on it, you're getting a performance vehicle. It's fast, it's, it's, it's excellent in the corners. There's not much in it, no. like considering, the heritage of that and how that is like considered a class leading you know hatchback mm. this is pretty remarkable and i think from for me this this is definitely a shining star yeah and in its class uh, you know i haven't driven many other cars in this class no. but this is like compared to that it really holds its own and it's yeah. a lot of fun yeah i just i think that's the thing what you said there about it being fun i think this is it's not as the only thing is, it doesn't sound quite as good. I would have thought that yeah. this would have sounded better than than. It just sounds like an unleaded, two yeah. liter unleaded. Yeah, there's not really anything to it. There's no guts to it. Is no, there? but apart from that, like I just said, that I I I prefer this. I, I think this is it's slightly more modern. There are aspects of this that are slightly more model, modern. The the styling for me personally is a little bit better. I'm just an idiot for not buying the GTI Plus yeah. because everything that I like about your car, the Golf like the xenon lights the armrest and you know everything else apart from obviously the sound you can get in this with the gti plus yeah and and again i think considering there's probably 10 11 000 pounds retail in, in difference in price retail between these two vehicles yeah you know there isn't much in it no. you know but i think that for me again my favorite 
I, my heart still sits with you the like golf. The heritage, don't you? I like the heritage. Yeah. I like it's a bit more grown up. I feel inside yeah, and the way it I handles. Yeah, yeah. I, I think overall I prefer the styling, and it's a golf GTI. And you can't get away from that. And it corners like a, an Esprit. It goes like a Ferrari, and you know, I, it, and it's. I mean, it's that practical. was. It's under thirty grand that car. Yeah, you? under thirty grand. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, you're getting a lot of car for your money. Yeah. Yeah, well, there you go, we're divided, but that's the way things are sometimes. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs>